Who's luckier than us? <laughs> Good morning. I'm Alison Barish. My pronouns are she and her. I'm the worship associate this morning. I'm pleased to welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington. Hello to those of you who are watching on Zoom now or later on YouTube. And I'd like to extend a special welcome today to newcomers. If you are new to our congregation and want to speak to someone to learn more about us, please visit our membership table in the social hall or speak to one of the greeters you met on the way in. And know that whoever you are, whomever you love, and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. Beloveds, enter into this space made holy by our presence and by the spirits of our ancestors. Enter into this hour made holy by our intention. Bring yourself and know that you are surrounded by those who have gone before. Enter in and let us worship together. This morning, Julia Barish will light our chalice. The flaming chalice is a symbol of Unitarian Universalism. We kindle our faith in the cup of our covenant as we enter into worship together. And our chalice lighting today are words from Mary Oliver. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it. And when the time comes to let it go, to let it go. I invite you to rise in body and spirit, body or spirit, and join in singing our first hymn, number 103, for all the saints. I invite you to join in singing our affirmation together. The words are on the screen.
you are invited to light a candle for something deep in your heart. Nancy Wilco, today's pastoral care associate, will join us at the candles in the front and has a basket for cards for joys and concerns you'd like shared with the congregation. She also has blank cards and pens if you'd like to write something now. Is Nancy here? All right, well, oh, Sue McGovern. Well, okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, today we are also honoring our ancestors. If you haven't already, you're invited to place photos of your departed loved ones on the altar at this time as well. As the music plays, I invite you to come forward or go to the candle table in the back. Beloveds, I have a few of the prayers you've shared here. Well, the prayers that you have shared, and I'm sure there are others on your heart. Today, let us pray for um, these that have been shared. Lost another beautiful soul to cancer. Sing with the angels, Amy Peters. Please keep our little family in your thoughts as we move again. For my husband, not my husband. For my husband, yeah. Praying for a safe, fair, and sane election and praying that people vote early if possible. For democracy, these are mixed, yes, but we, we pray also that 
the joys and thanks we give raise all our hearts, if even just a little bit. And so we also wish a happy 90th birthday to Barbara Lazarus. And a big warm welcome to all our friends visiting from Bayshore. We hope to see you more in the coming weeks. Beloveds, we pray in so many different ways. We understand prayer in so many different ways, yes? Some of us pray to a deity. Some of us pray to whatever it is that we can't name that's beyond ourselves. Some of us send good thoughts to the universe. And sometimes some of us just hear the prayers as speaking out loud to remind ourselves of the work we still need to do. However you understand prayer, will you, will you join me now, please? Spirit of life and love, you known to us by, in so many ways, by so many names, by no name, and beyond all naming. Here we are again, here we are again, creating hope in the midst of chaos and uncertainty, creating community. You have heard the prayers shared out loud, and you know those that remain in the silence of our hearts. Help us, help us to be strong for one another. Help us to remember the lessons of our ancestors that we may build the beloved community together and share this, share our community along the way. We pray in all holy names. Amen. Would you join please in singing Spirit of Life? The words are on the screen. Well, Halloween is coming up. <laughs> Who loves Halloween? <gasps> oh. Who loves Who loves dressing up in costumes? Who loves getting candy? Who loves giving out candy? There's a lot to love. If you were at the Halloween party here on Friday night, you saw there were a lot of witches. People dress up in all sorts of ways on Halloween. Would you like to know why we do that? Let me tell you. <laughs> so Halloween is a shortened form. It's a, you know if you say things fast, they, the, the, the words change, right? So it's shortened version of All Hallows' Eve. All Hallows' Eve. Well, All Hallows' Eve is right before, the night before All Saints' Day, and then All Souls' Day is the day after that. And these are days in the Christian calendar where Christians remember their ancestors and their exemplars, the people who were, who were good, good role models to be. 
And it just so happens that it also happens around the same time as a pagan Wiccan holiday called, does anybody know what it's called? Samhain. Did, did, I heard a few of those. I heard some whispers. Samhain. And this was a time, this is a time that's considered, that people considered in history, a time when the veil between the worlds, oh, does that sound spooky? The veil between the worlds is thinnest. So a time when it's possible to communicate, to receive messages and communicate with those who have died, those who've gone before. And also a time to honor ancestors. But with the veil being thin, you know, not all the spirits are necessarily good spirits, right? Not all, so people started dressing up in costumes, scary costumes, to scare away the evil spirits. So once upon a time for Halloween, people tried to just dress in scary things, lots of ghosts. And some people think witches are scary. Do you think witches are scary? No. no. But some people think witches are scary, so people would dress as witches, and all kinds of scary things to scare away the evil spirits so that folks can communicate with the good spirits, right? And these days, we dress up in all sorts of costumes, don't we? So I have, I have my witchy hat, and some people call these my witchy shoes. So I'm, I'm ready. And um, sometimes we do really elaborate costumes, and sometimes people do costumes that are, that are witty, right? Witty costumes, they're kind of like inside jokes. And um, so one year my son went as a car, so my daughter went as a road. <laughs> one year he wanted to be a, an, a crocodile, so she went as the crocodile hunter's wife. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding you, right? These are, these are more like witty costumes. And some people still do scary costumes. And some people do dress up just as somebody they've always wanted to dress up as or something they've always wanted to dress up as. And I know that we have a lot of costumes here right now. So I think that if you have a costume and you want to join a costume parade, this would be a good time for you to come up and join me. And we're going to have a parade around the sanctuary while Dylan plays some... Scary tunes, yeah? <laughs> okay, are we ready? Here we go. Thank you for joining me in that. Now, since it's not Thanksgiving and this isn't Macy's, we're not going to do a dance number for you now. You get to go back to your seats and we'll continue with the service. It's not Macy's.
Our reading this morning is the poem Epitaph by American writer Merritt Malloy. When I die, give what's left of me to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me and the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die. People do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. So we have a lot of holidays just now. 
Halloween, All Saints, All Souls, Samhain, and it's also Diwali, um, which is a, not a holiday of remembering ancestors. That's more of a holiday of, of hope and renewal. Uh, the, the, um, the Hindu holiday to remember ancestors, which I wrote down and brilliantly left out of my script, is, um, but that passed uh, about a month, not quite a month ago. All cultures, all cultures that I'm aware of do something in which we take time to remember those who went before. Does anybody here have a regular spiritual practice? I see some heads nodding. So part of my regular daily spiritual practice is I, I read a devotional every morning. And the one I'm currently uh, using, and I can recommend many, and I highly recommend this one if you're interested. Come see me if, you're, if you'd like to know. But um, I'm using a devotional now by the Irish poet Padre Gotuma. Um, you hear me mention him a lot or use him a lot in services. He was one of my doctoral professors and, and also just an outstanding poet. Anyway, in the devotional that I'm using that, that he wrote recently, this morning, the, the small reading for today was taken from the prophet by Khalil Gibran and it resonated with me for what we're doing today. So this is from the prophet. Then a woman said, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the selfsame well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say, joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily, you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and his silver, needs must your joy or your sorrow rise or fall. Oof. It's true that we, we carry these things together. We are remembering people here on this altar, people for whom I'm sure many tears have been shed. And yet, it's, if sorrow comes because of the joy that we've had, because of what we missed, We must acknowledge that not everyone who has gone before us is missed. Have you heard the saying, some people have a sign in their house, everyone brings joy when they come through this door. Some when they come, others when they leave. <laughs> but beloveds, we stand on all their shoulders. Why do we take the time to remember? Why do elephants visit elephant graveyards and caress the bones of the dead? You know they do that? Yeah. Why is it important for us to remember? 
Because, beloveds, we were not created ex nihilo. We, weren't, we didn't just appear out of nothing one day. We carry the very DNA of those who went before us. Perhaps, perhaps you've sent away and did one of those DNA tests to see where you come from. I bet some of you have done that, yeah. And it tells us where our ancestors came from. Can I tell you I did that and I got no surprises. Maybe you had no su surprises. 100% Ashkenazi. Well, I knew that before I spent my money to get the DNA test, but okay. But I don't know. I, I, I know names of folks a few generations back. They stood on shoulders too. I don't know the names of all of my ancestors. Maybe some of you have done genealogy. Maybe you do. And we stand on the shoulders of all of them, even the ones of whom we are not proud. Even the ones who did things that maybe we are ashamed of. Let me tell you that if you're ashamed of something that happened 150 years ago, it's time to move past that shame, learn from it, and do better. Right? We can't change the past, but we can learn from it, even those whom we don't particularly miss, who did things that we think, oh, I can't believe that's in my family. Right? Or in my culture, in my faith tradition, in my country. Because even if we're not blood-related, we have inherited behaviors and systems and land even, right? So look at this table. Look at all these who've gone before. These are the beloveds. I know, I'm, I'm sure none of you brought pictures of those folks you'd rather not remember. But look at the beloveds. We can learn from the beloveds by their good examples, yes? We can learn from them and remember the things they said to us, the things they taught us by example and by words. My father always used to say to me, people are always saying somebody ought to do something. Well, you're somebody, do something. And when I grew older and was doing a lot of things and he said to me, did, did you have to take me so literally? <laughs> um, you're some, somebody, do something. What, what are the treasures, the words that somebody said to you? And what can we learn from the bad examples? Well, we can certainly learn what not to do, right? Has anybody had a, a bad example, a mentor, a, a, a parent, I'm sorry, a grandparent, a, an uncle, a, could be an aunt too, right? But somebody you knew who just, oh, oh. When I get older, or when I am in that situation, I know I won't do that. Has anybody ever said that? Or maybe a teacher in school? Well, I certainly won't do it that way. We, that's a teaching thing. We have learned. So let us give thanks also for those lessons, and let us give thanks that those hard lessons have passed. Yeah? Because we stand on those shoulders, too. So, beloveds, we will honor our ancestors today. We will honor the love these ancestors had for us. We will especially honor those who are good role models today, yes, those we loved and cherished, those who loved and cherished us. And then let us ask ourselves, how will we honor their memory, how will we be their legacy? What will we do so that someone will remember us? Not as what not to do, but as a good role model. What can we do so that someone later on will say, 
I learned this from that person. Because of that person, I will do this good in the world. Beloveds, that is why we come together to honor their memories. That is why we are here today. Let us remember them and give thanks. Namaste. So we are today remembering those upon whose shoulders we are lifted up, our ancestors, our teachers, those who have made it possible for us to be who we are and where we are today. And if you have a photo of a departed loved one that you have not yet placed on the altar, I invite you to do that now. And if you're watching um, on Zoom now, um, well, if you're or, or on YouTube later, I invite you to have a picture of your loved one nearby. And if you are watching on Zoom, when we speak the names of our loved ones out loud, you are invited to share the names of your loved ones in the chat. Our litany this morning is taken from the hymnal. It's number 720 in the gray hymnal, and it's adapted by... Uh, from, it's adapted from Rabbi Roland B. Gittleson, a Navy chaplain during World War II, and the first Jewish chaplain assigned to the Marine Corps. Beloveds, this is We Remember Them. Will you respond, please, after each section with We Remember Them, as Alice and I, Allison and I share the reading? In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of the summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick of heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us, and we, we remember, remember them. them. Beloveds, I invite you now to speak out the names, remembering, remembering the poem we heard, that love doesn't die, people do, so when all that's left of me is love, give me away, keeping love at the center now. I invite you to speak out the names of your loved ones into this space or to type them into the chat. It doesn't matter if we speak over one another, let their names be heard. Listen to that holy murmur, did you hear it? All those names rising up. For all those names shared today, for all whom we have learned from and loved, we give thanks for having known them, and we do remember them. Amen. Now, if you haven't had a chance at the end of the service, I invite you to come and take a look at all those photos that are shared. I'm sure there are many more names. I know there were many more names spoken out loud than the photos here. But do come and look at the photos because when we speak the names and see the faces again, that helps keep memory alive. And then before you leave today, please take your photos with you. I, I want to make sure that um, they all get returned to the right places. Yes? Each week, we give an offering for our split plate program. That means that undesignated donations are split between the UUFH 
and our charity of the month unless you indicate otherwise. This month, we're supporting the Huntington Youth Bureau, the nonprofit arm of the Huntington Youth Bureau. Oh, I'm sorry, the Huntington Youth Bureau Institute, which is the nonprofit arm of the Huntington Youth Bureau. The Institute was established in 1979 and has as its primary goal the creation, promotion, and implementation of programs and services which stresses youth development and meets the expressed and demonstrated needs of youth and their families in the town of Huntington. It helps runaway and homeless youth, at-risk youth, youth in crisis, and youth in need of employment and aids with independent living skills, civic engagement, and career planning. Ushers will be passing the basket while Dylan plays. For those of you at home, you can send a check to the office or donate through the website, Zelle, or PayPal. Thank you for all of the support of the work you do within and beyond these walls. Will the ushers come forward with the baskets, please? By the time I leave, we will have this down, right? And then the next minister will do the next thing. Will you join me in dedicating the offering? The words are on the screen. That's all. To the work of our faith, which is weaving a tapestry of love and action, we dedicate our lives and these our offerings. Amen. Thank you. I invite you to rise and body your spirit for our final hymn. It's number 107. Now sing we of the brave of old.
it's very interesting. The words on the screen are a different verse from the words in the Bible. That happens sometimes. Okay. Beloveds, oh, you can stay. All right, well, you're seated now. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll do it seated today. Go in peace. Go in love. Go knowing that you are walking on the shoulders of giants who went before. And go always in the footsteps of the holy. Amen. And now we extinguish our chalice flame. For our worship has ended, and our service begins. As you begin your day, just a few announcements. Um, the pumpkin patch cleanup will be happening today from noon to 1.30, and many hands are needed. Please join the pumpkin queens at the American Legion Hall pumpkin patch right after coffee hour. And next Sunday is a very exciting time. After service, we'll be hosting Bella Noche, New York's premier mermaid queen, along with some other readers for Come As You Are Rainbow Story Hour from 1 to 3. Pre-registration is required for this event, and there will be food trucks on the property. Please see the flash for details. And finally, next Saturday, we'll have AED and CPR training offered from 9 to noon. This training is no cost for the leadership team, RE teachers, and security teams, and is available to all members and friends for a small fee. Please see Terry Donaldson for more information. You can get all these details and more in this week's flash and on our website. If you're not receiving our weekly e-newsletter every Thursday, you can sign up on our homepage at uufh.org. Thank you, Pastor Madeline and Dylan. I wish everyone a good day, and please greet Pastor Madeline on your way out into coffee hour. Thank you. <laughs>